your uh, appearance on the record. For yes. <laughs> Wendy Berger from the firm of Cole Shots here from the applicant. Um, at the conclusion of last month's meeting when everyone was a bit tired, um, there were still two more residents of the public that were concluding, Mr. Powers and Diane McFarland, um, according to the record. So I will sit to the side and let the residents, those two residents, conclude. Right. Mr. Powers uh, was in the middle of his comments. And then there's uh, Diane McFarlane, or Miss McFarlane, Farley, I'm sorry, Miss McFarley. She's here tonight. Yeah, I am. Oh, that's you, okay. So you're next, and that's <laughs> basically it. Mr. Powers, I think maybe you should sit down. Yeah, I was just going to say that. You want, to, you want to sit down, Mr. Powers? Um, I'll, I'll go ahead and stand up here. Sure? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's tight in here. That's uh, please be quiet in the audience. Mr. Powers, good evening. Uh, I, I, I suggest we swear you in just in case you want to stray into some testimony and explain some of the ideas you might have. So if you don't mind, you raise your right hand. You solemnly swear upon any testimony you offer to see when you receive the whole truth and what you love that you said that you got. And if you separate your full name, spell in your last name. Charles Powers, with the arrest 1374 in Kevin Lane, and Tina. Excuse my problem. Mr. Powers, um, even though you get a chance to continue here tonight, please don't, uh, please try to uh, make your comments something nouveau, something new that you didn't say last time because you spent there quite a long time, and which is fine, I have no problem with that. Just don't repeat yourself because it's already on the record, and I see you're fighting with the microphone. It may be a uh, all your friends in town council, maybe you can ask them to buy us a better PA system. They said they have no problem, it's only us. Oh, it's only us, yeah, okay, fine. <laughs> but um, let me just begin by um, a, a couple of procedural questions not raised last time. I'm not clear on whether or not... Um, this is for your comments, right, Mr. Powers? Okay, go ahead. I'm not clear whether or not MLUL 48 1 through 4 has been met by by this applicant. As you, I'm sure, know, um, any, any owner of, of a corporation who is applying uh, before a Board of Adjustment must provide the names of anyone who has more than 10%. And uh, when I opened that, what I got back was the application, <coughs> and the application itself um, does list, list three members, but I have no idea whether or not they are the only people who have a 10% membership, or, uh, and, and because that is not actually specified in their application. <coughs> and I'm concerned about that, um, because that actually, if you take a look at 48.3, you will see that that is something that uh, that the Board of, of, of Adjustment must have prior to approving uh, any application. Uh, the second point I want to raise is I'm not clear because I've again opened issues associated with the, the, um, the amendment that was made at, at your suggestion, Mr. Uh, uh, Chair, about uh, the uh, uh, the 25 additional spaces. And I want to just read a bit from from the from the the uh, 620 testimony in which Ms. Berger, when you asked her whether or not they were included in the 25 additional spots, said no because as we discussed, it's our opinion and our expert's opinion that those spaces are not needed and it would not be a good planning and good zoning to increase the size of that parking deck. Due to the fact that it would then go to the property line, we would have a large wall around the back, which they think, we think would have a detrimental impact on the neighbors. I don't believe this issues associated with that were actually ever addressed subsequent to whatever it is that was actually going on with the only, the only amendment that I know that you folks have actually received 
was a letter dated from the architect on the 21st of August, and it specified three, three options. And if you have some other amendment that actually clarifies that, that would be useful. But I also want to bring to everyone's attention something you said, Mr. Chair, that is concerning to me. It says, uh, I understand what you're saying. I'm not just sure of someone I should say. If they should approve, if the board will approve this, I would like to see those 25 additional spaces. Everything else will be acceptable, you said. At least the way I see the balances that we have to look at it. There, there will be a deficiency unless those 25 spaces are actually put in. I found that a concerning statement, Mr. Chair, because it was made before Mr. Leiden had come. We were close to completing his statement about how he was addressing the variances, which I'm going to be talking about tonight. As you know, um, the powers of this board are pretty well prescribed in terms of what it is that must be done in order to meet the negative criteria of uh, of every, of every variance. And um, in the, uh, the um, process by which the, the uh, public was actually uh, asked to, to look at that question, you have heard a very clear statement from very many residents that they believe this, would, this approval of this would be a detriment to the public. But I want to move on to a discussion that you've heard a little bit about, but I want to draw your particular attention to what Mr. Lydon said. I agree. And that actually addresses whether or not this, this, uh, this application does in fact meet the master plan and therefore meet the criteria that deal with the powers that you have to approve a, an application if it does not actually meet the, uh, the zoning plan and the ordinance related to it. <coughs> Most of his initial testimony was actually devoted from pages 115 to 148 on, in May 16th, that's a long time ago, to uh, justifying what he believed was actually the, the uh, he believed was actually the clear meaning of the master plan, which he claimed was to uh, provide uh, a justification that was, that was consistent with the master plan, both in its 2007 forms, but also in the 2011, 2014, and 2017. I'm not going to read at length again, because you folks have already heard it several times. But as you know, Mr. Price, in addressing precisely that question, said that he did not believe that the <coughs> high-rise buildings being proposed for, the, uh, for the, two, the State Street area, of which this is one, actually were consistent with the master plan. The proposed development in the study area is both substantially taller and more dense than the existing development within the State Street area, which is comprised predominantly of lower rise residential apartments and one and two story retail and mixed use, um, uh, mixed use zoning. The, um, most of those projects are smaller scale build buildings, he went on to say. Now, there are both disadvantages and disadvantages and advantages of actually having such buildings there. But at the same time, the scale and character of the State Street study area will be irreversibly transformed by the development of significantly more dense and taller multifamily residential development that was not contemplated by the township's current master plan or the reexamination reports, which are meant to guide the development to the, to the township. The cumulative impacts of the proposed development within the study area must be considered going forward. Just a little The cumulative impacts of the proposed development within the study area must be considered going forward. As such, if development of this type is going to be permitted in the future, and this application is something in the future, it merits a reexamination of the master plan policy and the zoning for the State Street area to determine whether such development is appropriate and is designed in such a matter as to ensure that it is sensitive to and compatible with existing development to which it is adjacent, as well as the neighborhood of which it's a part. You have heard many, many of the, of the uh, residents echo that concern, but it clearly stands in, state in, in, in juxtaposition to what it was that Mr. Clyde was telling you about the master plan and therefore issues associated with, uh, with the, the negative criteria questions at the very least. 
And Mr. Leiden actually went on in his discussion of why he thought things were consistent and why, in fact, the township had not actually gone ahead and developed a, an ordinance which would be which would not have required him to have had to make such you know, just justify such very large variances by su suggesting that the the planning board and the uh, council simply had not had time. And I want to direct your attention to two things about that, those statements from Mr. Light. The planning board does not plan to change the, uh, the master plan in respect to that. In fact, the TDEC planning board attorney on the master plan parameters is actually a YouTube in which the uh, planning board attorney on the 29th of September made it very clear that he did not think that that was actually something that had been overlooked and therefore required new, uh, new, uh, new, new zoning. So therefore, the current zoning would have continued to apply. And in fact, the mayor told, since the, Mr. Leiden kept on pointing out that was, the council was going along with that, with that uh, way of thinking newly about the, about the, one, the 100 area, he said to call the audience of 200 in the uh, town hall recently, you can find this on YouTube, Governor Murphy holds Tina Hall at 112 of the video, and he said, we are still at nine units per acre. <coughs> Mr. Leiden's suggestion that the only reason that that had not been changed was it had been overlooked and the council and the, and the, and the planning board had not had time. It appears that in fact, although Mr. Price says you would have to change the master plan in order to go forward with these new, new uh, applications, it, it, now, it now appears that neither the mayor nor the planning board are planning to go through that change. They don't think, as Mr. Biden said, you should think, that in fact something had to be done to change it. And so therefore it seems to me that is an important issue to keep in mind as you try to figure out just exactly what this, what's going on with this. I want to go ahead now and focus on something that is absolutely directly related to what I've just been saying but that does focus specifically on the negative criteria issues. Uh, in the May 16th transcript at page 145, line 23, Mr. Lyons says, at some point in my testimony, I'm going to have to get to the negative criteria. And one of the things I want to point out is that we will not, over, will not be overtaxing the school district. That was his single example about how to handle all 12 variances that are going to be Associated page with that this. Uh, yes, to page 145, line 23. Then on the June 20th um, transcript at page 10, lines 14 to 16, citing some, some legal cases, Mr. Leiden said, they basically ask you to show how the site can still function even though you are seeking variances. I think we can meet that burden. Then, of course, this is important. Then, of course, you always have to show the negative criteria for every single variance. Well, what was sort of amazing about that was when I asked Mr. Mr. Uh, Leiden whether or not he had, in fact, provided exactly that level of, of, uh, of assurance, he, um, he said something very interesting, and I will read directly from the uh, transcript of 9.5 which I said, um, page 10, line 15 and 16, which I just read to you. Hold on, 9, 5. Page 10, line 15 and 16. And, and Mr. Berger asked which date. One second, one second. Page, page 10, line 15 and 16. Again, we're back at, um, at the, uh, what, I just, what I just read to you from the uh, June transcript. I said, <coughs> I say, page, this is 620, page 10, lines 15, 60. You are I'm characterizing sorry, the variances the and then. One second. September 5th, 2019, what page? Page 139. 139. Hold on. This is my testimony. 139. Page 10, line 15, 16. Which state? I what say. Page line 10? No, he's referring to the, 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 oh, your, the powers, it says, it says the following. Yeah. Okay. 
Why you are you characterizing. Why did we read it in the context? It doesn't make sense what you're trying to read. I'm trying to show you that Mr. Biden claimed yeah. that he had, in fact, covered all the variances, and I'm not ready to show you that he did not. So why don't you start with a question that makes sense so you get a pop-up okay. passage of well, the... Well, in fact, because Ms. Berger had objected to the, the characterization of how I handled that. So if, I, if you want me to go back, I can read that whole thing in there. But the, basic, the issue that I'm addressing is I'm asking Mr. Mr. Biden whether or not the variances... You are, you are characterizing the variances, and then you say, of course, you always have to show the negative criteria for every variance. Mm -hmm. Mr. Leiden, does your testimony in any way provide us with negative, the negative criteria? He said, yes. Do you believe it does? He said, yes. I said, is it true that the only two variances to which your testimony refers are height and density? And he said, I don't believe that that is true. So how would one actually go out figuring out whether or not you folks had had a justification of the negative criteria given to you for the 12 variances. Well, a very good way to do that would be to go through the process of looking at where negative criteria were actually addressed in Mr. Lyons' in Mr. Lyons' testimony. And I've actually done that pretty consistently. He cites, um, he, he says in, in, at one point, his answer to why the negative criteria are met is to say that both 1475 and 1400 State Street, even though that's not built, there is an approval of it, and shows that the 100 State Street project is consistent. And that, that, that what we actually should know about that, folks, is that your approval of that 140 State Street has now expired. So he was referring to something that does no longer exists. And how that actually helps on the negative criteria, I am not at all clear about when they are specific to this set of very, a, a, a really quite, quite clear. Let me just remind you of what it is that you folks are being asked to approve tonight. It looks like this. That's not each one of them. But in each, in each case, you are looking at what this ordinance is and what it is you're being asked to approve. I don't know if you'd like to see this more. I can have several more copies if you want to see this. But in each case, it's a dramatic difference from what it is that the zone calls for, and which the mayor has just said he's happy to live with, and which the planning board has just said it is not, as Mr. Biden predicted, you would, going to be able to change. But you need a negative criteria justification for not just these, but for every one of them. And so I've gone looking to see whether or not Mr. Biden ever provided what it is that you're talking about. He does say on, line, on, line, on page 26 of the June 20th um, transcript at line 20, he says it shows that the, the, those other, other uh, buildings shows compatible, show compatible with existing patterns of development thereby directly contradicting what this Mr. Price just said about the area, other, other uh, properties in that area. And so all those all go to the negative criteria. I just heard Mr. Price said that isn't true. And he just said that goes to the negative criteria. I guess I'll find it sort of coverage thereof. On page 26, line 22, he, uh, he tries to suggest that somehow articulation for lightning and for air I think those also go to the, go to the negative criteria. I'm trying to help me help me understand why a zero is a zero back lot or inadequate side lots or 68 units instead of instead of nine actually is actually handled by the fact that you have uh, in his view in this building articulation for lighting and for air. Let's go to line 54, and this is unbelievably important because here your town your town planner questions whether or not what has been has been provided as justification to you for the variances that Mr. Biden told you he must provide justification for. And Ms. Laney, speaking for the planners, who then goes right to the issue and says the council has not rezoned or made any recommendation in the RM zone. So how do you address the negative criteria, she asks. How do you reconcile what you're proposing with the fact that the zoning doesn't permit 
and the master plan doesn't recommend it. Wow. Mr. Mr. Biden's response is again typically unresponsive. He cites the approval of the 1600 River Road Zone and says that the fact that the, there was a resolution that went through the council that seemed to be interested in whether or not to put 44 does, um, parking spaces across the street is a justification for saying that the council is fully on board with it. But in fact, if you read that resolution, what you'll find is it says we're not making any judgment about whether or not that's a good thing. We're simply telling you that if the Board of Adjustment approves it, we would be okay with actually having that, uh, that city property uh, paid and, uh, and striped. Um, I can read that more specifically if you're interested in that. And so a direct, a direct examination of light by this light burn in that same, in that same time frame on page 178 of, this, of the 620, sorry, of the, um, of the, of the that was actually the, uh, the August, uh, August version. Um, Ms. Lightburn says, hold what on, is his wait, job? Wait, wait, hold on, hold it. Okay, let me get that out for you specifically. Yes, please. exactly what's going on. And, and Mr. Barr, you asked, you said, in respect to the question that Ms. Piper was saying, what is this man, what is his job? They are proffering him as an expert on planning uh, and, the zone, and the zoning and zoning laws. And Ms. Piper says, right. And then the chair continues, that means how the impact of zoning according to zone laws, positive and negative criteria, and technically as to what zoning is allowed in this area. I have just rendered to you a complete and total description of everything that Mr. Biden ever told you about negative criteria. Remember, he had begun by telling you that it was his responsibility with his testimony, and his was the only testimony that talked about variances. He was gonna give you the justification for every single variance, and rather, to doing what Mr. Burgess did for you recently in trying to figure out what to do about the, uh, the uh, Mayanot application. He took you through every one of the variances and explained how the negative criteria were met. You don't have any testimony, folks, that would justify those variances. And I believe you don't even have for the ones related to which he claimed to have, to have in terms of both density and height, but you certainly don't have it in relation to 10. And so therefore, you don't have what you need to approve this application tonight. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Krause. Okay, please. I should say, sorry, I, I have some questions for... Go ahead, that was respond. So, you know, I've also gone through um, the impact study that you referenced. And you know, while the, while I agree with you know the, the points that you that you, you mentioned that you know um, th that are talked about, I'm not sure that it's that black and white, right? I I think I think the impact study um, makes a point, you know, to talk about. It, it says, for instance, the new development will generate new residents and thus more customers for nearby stores, potentially spurring the revitalization of neighborhood retail areas. It will diversify the housing stock and generate housing for low and moderate income households. Um, as evidenced by fit the fiscal impact analysis, it will generate a substantial tax revenue. Okay, now, does, does, that, does that, in your mind, go to... Mr. Zahn, you got to show me. Please. Go ahead, I'm sorry. Yeah, no, so... Because as, as part of this, I, I'm trying, you know, because I, I, I understand that m most of, 
<laughs> Is it your testimony that that's a lie? Good point. That's why I don't touch the fans. <laughs> Mics and fans, that's what we need. So, you know, because you know, what, I'm, what I'm trying to do is I'm, I'm trying to f figure out the uh, looking at, I want to look at the detrimental impact, right, and, and determine whether or not, it, you know, the impact it will have on single family residents, which is one of the objectives in, in, the, um, in, in the master plan. And, and as I go through, you know, so, so for me, I'm trying to figure out, okay, well, what is it that um, would be considered a, a detrimental impact, right? Would, is a multifamily residence on its face per se a detrimental impact? I don't think so. And, and, and the reason is the master plan talks about um, multifamily residents, right? And it says that they don't recommend it because of the parking issue, right? It says, you know, parking comes out to roughly twenty to thirty thousand dollars a space and and the applications that were before the board at the time were providing either zero or or one space. And they said, you know, they, they don't recommend um, these types of devel developments. But had they wanted to, they could have said, you know, they, they made a point to say that, or the, the master plan made a point to say that um, they don't recommend these developments um, until the parking issue is, is looked at, right, or, or taken care of. They could very easily have said, um, you know, we don't recommend these developments because they are against the master plan because they have a detrimental impact on, on single family residents, but, but they, they didn't say that. So. So I, I look at I look at the parking as, as something to, to, to you know to look at right. The close the, the places for there very much closer by virtue particularly of the twenty five additional spaces to not having to require a variance whatsoever is in relationship to parking. But right. So, but but that sorry sorry. Why does that have become no no so I, I, I'm just you know, I'm right. just trying to because you brought up the. Um, you, you brought up the impact study as if it was kind of, you know, the, the smoking gun, right? And, and if you go through the impact study, it, you know, it, it goes through things that I would consider would be, um, you know, would be important, right? Will this have an impact on policing? Will it have an impact on the ambulance? Will it have an impact on waste? And it goes through, will it have an impact on schools? And it goes through all of that very clearly, the, the same impact study, and, and it says it doesn't have an impact on any of those except maybe recycling, right? So, 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 so I mean, these are factors. It, it's not as clear cut as I think you, you want to present it as. I, I didn't actually go into an evaluation of what might be the positive criteria. I will simply cite the fact that in his own direct statement in respect of adding to additional property <coughs> proposals of this sort, he said that should await a change in the, in, the, in the master plan because he found it inconsistent with that. In fact, would he reversibly change the character of the town? Who's he? And that's, what? Who's, who's he? he? Yes, Mr. Price. Mr. Price quoted okay. directly from okay. the impact. Okay. No, no, it's okay. And so, but, I, so I, carefully began my discussion about sort of where the master plan sat. And then I also picked up what Ms. Ms. Laney told you about what the master plan said. And she very specifically, when she got to the question of whether or not Mr. Leiden had passed what he needed to, in respect of the negative criteria for each and every variance, she said, where is it? And when I asked the question, have you actually provided that, Mr. Leiden? He said, yes. And I said, have you provided for more than two? He said, I think so. I, then I've gone looking. I've gone through the whole transcript. For ten, at least 10 of the variances, he never even gets close to it. And for the other two variances, it seems to me very unclear that you now have a justification for either the height, because one of the things that Mr. Price and Ms. Laney are interested in is the fact that the height variances are really quite extraordinary. That's what those maps, those, 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 those diagrams are about. And in terms of the number of units per. Leiden said, 
oh, that's just because the planning board and the council haven't gotten around to it. And I just proved to you tonight that neither the master plan does it intend to address that, nor does the mayor, anyhow, in speaking to 200 people in front of the governor, think that more than nine is going to be required. My point is, you've got your job is to figure out whether or not that Mr. Melfi has found in this application, which have these, which are, you know, I'll show you that thing again, but every one of those, every one of those graphs showed you how dramatically out of scale what you're being asked to pass. And you must meet for every one of them, according to Mr. Lighton, rightly, a negative criteria. And he hasn't provided word one in respect to most of them. You, well, you want to go to the global issue. That's fine. I'm focusing on what his job was in respect to the specific 12 variances. I don't think he made it on even the two. He certainly didn't even address the 10. Thank you very much, Mr. Powell. All right, Mr. McFarley. Please come up. Could you state your name and address for me? You're going to speak a little closer to the mic, much, much closer than you really like to, and then uh, our attorney is going to swear you in. Okay. Yes. If you don't mind, raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear or affirm any testimony you might give this evening as opposed to questions? Is it true, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. Yeah. Wonderful. Man. Welcome this evening. Thank you. Okay. I'm going to start that. Can everybody hear in the back? Can you hear me? No. No. You're no. 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 really kissing. <laughs> Almost kissed Mr. Rose. I was, I am a lifetime resident of Teaneck. I moved here when I was probably one or two months old, and I'm 55. I, so I'm concerned. I'm concerned about the future of Teaneck. I have read the master plan and I see what's going on on around State Street, around Teaneck, and I think growth is growth is needed, but I think to the extent what is being proposed is a bit much. I ride, I'm a, I'm a triathlete, I ride and I bike in those areas, and I'm concerned about the increase of traffic that will be going going on cars coming in and so if you know and I and I run these streets I bike these streets you know so they're part of my training training group and I'm concerned I am very much concerned about you know what is going on and and is it consistent you know with the master plan and you know in the future of TNEC you know, being living here for 55 years, you know, I I am truly concerned in what will I leave for my children and my grandchildren to come, and will they be safe? You know, just walking down the street. I I know my parents moved here 55, 56 years ago, and they moved here because they knew. They moved from New York City and they wanted to raise their kids in a town, not a city. Otherwise, they could have stayed in the city and, and flourished in the city as well. But they came here to Teaneck because Teaneck offered great opportunity for everyone. And to see the massive changes, you know, is, is really concerning to me. Um, I frequent that area even on Sundays. Sundays, there's no parking. And that's just on a Sunday. You know, af after church, we go and to support, you know, the businesses al along the plaza. But this is, this is really too much. And, and just to see, you know, Tina go down this road like other, other areas, you know. I don't, I don't want to live in Fort Lee. 
where you see massive expansion going on. I don't want, I want to stay in Teaneck. I want it still to be a town that I could raise, you know, my grandchildren would be welcome to come and to be raised. And to have this type of development, I think is just, you know, I think it's a shame. I really think it's a shame that, you know, I'm, you know, I'm not talking just about, you know, our property value is going to go down. Who knows? Who knows? With this type of residential construction, who knows? Therefore, you know, the value of property goes down as well. But I think Teaneck is a really nice place to raise a family and to go through the educational system. But these kinds of changes, you know, I would, I would tell you, I would be afraid to start, you know, to continue biking and running along, you know, this is my race court. This is where I, this is where I train. This is where I train for the New York City Marathon. And I just, no, no. I qualified for next year, but you know, as, <laughs> thank you. Thank you, but you know, but like I said, you know, this is, this is my training ground. You know, go to the park, going down the plaza, getting something to eat on a long run or a long, you know, bike, a bike tour. But I would be really, I would be really sad to see things change the way they seem to be going now. And I don't think this adds to Tina. Doesn't really, you know, from my perspective, it doesn't really add, but, um, and I know I can speak for my father who's, an audience, and he's probably he's been a resident longer than I have, and you know, and he frequents these areas. I can't see him feel safe, you know, walking in the plaza area, and I have to worry about you know, you know, the extra traffic. So that's all I have to say. You know, thank you very but, much. Thank you. Thank you. All right, and this concludes really the comments as to 100 States Week. Now, I know um, there's some members who uh, want to, number one, hear the sum summation. And I think, Ms. Berger, you wanted to sum up next at uh, the December 5th meeting. Can we uh, get a uh, waiver to carry this matter? Yes. Okay. And uh, some members will uh, weigh in. We want to make sure that there's plenty of members um, that will be Please here be for the quiet vote. In the audience. So we're going to carry this matter to 12 5, 7 o'clock, soon thereafter, in these chambers without further notice to the public. I have a motion, Mr. Morgan. Second, Mr. Mermelstein. All in favor to carry this matter? Aye. Any opposing? Hearing none. So this matter will be carried for your summation and a vote, hopefully a vote, on December 5th, 2019, 7 o'clock in these chambers. Do you then have defense?